Hello, how's everybody today? Here in Southern Ontario, in Canada, in the Great Lakes Basin, it's a warm and sunny day. And I'm spending it inside because I feel it's long overdue. Teaching pilots who are migrating to sim from arcade or realistic that sim you cannot play like you do arcade or realistic now everybody else a lot of youtubers have done many videos on controls how to set them up percentages you know what keys well, I'm not going to do that because that's not what this video is about. And if you need to know that stuff, Toastman has stuff on it. T-Rex has stuff on it on how to use the controls, even though I feel personally they leave some stuff out. Now then, them is game team play orientated. Gaijin went out of their way three or four years ago, I think it's closer to four years ago now, to make Sim team oriented. And one of the ways they did that was making ground attack and bombers a very important part of the gameplay. If you ignore defending convoys, or destroying your enemy's convoys, you're gonna lose. If you ignore defending or attacking whichever at battle zones, battle sites, I was gonna say, and then change it to the zones, battle zones, battle sites, and getting rid of the enemy tanks in advance, especially when it's crossed over to the line and is in your area you're gonna lose if you do not bomb airstrips and runways you're gonna lose sim is not about kill to death ratio it's about winning the game and another horrific way that Gaijin has made this a priority is by jacking the prices. Jets are really expensive now. Not only jets, but lower tier in the props. Like for instance, there's a tier three zero in the Japanese tree that costs 65,000 lions every time you get shot down and crash. Absolutely ludicrous. <coughs> They've lowered the price on the bombers. That was really stupid, raising them in the first place. If you make the game ground attack centric and then jack the prices up, so that nobody will take out a bomber. Well, that's just stupid as far as I can see it. So, like when you go into the props, like this is a tier five and it costs almost 20,000 lions if you crash. Now the way sim works is it's, we'll just round it off to 20,000. If you need, if it's gonna cost you 20,000 when you crash for repairs, the spawn points are gonna be half of that. So it's gonna cost you 10,000 spawn points just to get in. So on top of your repairs, you gotta also, you're also gonna lose. So that's close to 30,000 lions. This is Sim. Are you getting the picture yet? When you play Sim, 
you come there with the mindset that you are going to win. You're there to win. It's a 120% bonus for winning. Why then would you come there without the mindset of a team player, with the mindset of winning, and jeopardize everyone in your team, up to 16 players, losing 120%? Because the economy in War of Thunder, as I said, I know I'm being redundant, but I can't pound this home enough is that it is so expensive to play and with the way Gaijin has the economy set up in, in sim there are people who have to quit the game because of people like you who don't give a shit if you win or not because they're out of lines and they're not rich they don't have an oil well in their backyard they don't play the stock market. So every time they have to put money on their card to buy Golden Eagles, to buy Lions, to be able to continue to play, it's your fault. You're costing them money. And somebody like me, if you're not a sim player, and you say in the chat messages, I don't give a damn if I win or not. Well then, to put it bluntly, fuck off go somewhere else because I have friends who I played with for years who can no longer afford to play this game because of people like you so you need to concentrate on ground attack as much as anything you got to play the objectives capture the a point go after the surveillance planes which Gaijin recently replaced from props like uh, frontline bombers or even B-17 heavy bombers to jets. So now the surveillance plane is a jet or it's a prop plane, not a bomber. So you don't have a big target to shoot at. You have a fast moving small target now for surveillance planes. So you've got to do these things there's no if ands or buts if you've got a full team well not even with a full team it's a good example i was in a game not too long ago where there was only four of us that's right four and we we're playing germany tier six four and the american team or the ally team had 16 people well the Amer allies were all in bombers and attackers attacking airfields or strafing runways or just being total assholes. Nobody has any tolerance for runway strafers. It used to be at one time in this game that if you stra it was, well, it was considered taboo, forbidden. It was morally incomprehensible to strafe an innocent person or a defenseless person pro is better on the runway because he can't fight back. It's bad sportsmanship. It shows you're a coward and you probably can't fly or fight. So you go after the weakest target. Be a man. Wait till they get off the runway. If you're playing ill too, some of these servers will actually kick you off for shooting somebody on the runway and you're not allowed to shoot them until 30 seconds after they've taken off you're not allowed to attack them maybe that's what gaijin needs to stop you you <laughs> i'm biting my tongue don't strafe runways don't be that person anyway anyway i digress I get off on that topic but the point is the reason we were so close to the full team four players of us is because the four people on my team were playing the objectives we're playing to win I was going after surveillance planes and uh taking over A's and 
other guys were attacking convoys other guys were protecting convoys another guy would be guarding our bombers or attackers another person would be attacking their attack would be attacking their bombers or attackers so during the game a guy on the other team of 16 types in our message box he says how is it that a team of only four is almost winning i mean you're right behind us they're like a uh, hundred and uh and i think and we were at 104 and i was in an a and another guy was guarding uh our convoy ping 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 points coming up points coming up and the reason we were winning or almost winning four outnumbered four to one was because we played to win we played the objectives where the whole allied team all they did every one of them was either in a bomber or an attacker something with a bomb on it bombing the runways <coughs> so yeah they won but four people came to within i think it was five thousand points of winning and it absolutely astounded the other team can you imagine if we had eight players doing that or 10 or 15 or 16 a full team all concentrating on winning the game and playing the objectives shooting down surveillance planes playing the a um watching the convoys attacking other convoys going after the carriers destroying their carrier they destroyed our carrier we destroyed theirs you know their convoys didn't reach the uh uh line of scrimmage the battle line so they weren't able to set up a battle point we beat them there this is what this is the way Gaijin set Sim up. So, when you come to Sim, remember, you come as a team, you play as a team, you have people who are out there flying around looking for the enemy bombers, even hanging out just a little off their runways so that as they get off the runways and get a bit of altitude you can swoop down and shoot them before they get to yours to your runway so they can bomb it you have people who concentrate on uh, going after the attackers at the battle zones you have people concentrating on the convoys you have one or two people bombing, uh, going after, a, like, say, a frontline bomber, uh, like the uh, JU-288, going after the uh, BOBs, the forward operating bases, the red dots, the red uh, circles. <coughs> Sorry, my throat's getting dry. You have people flying heavy bombers, going after runways, airstrips, whatever you want to call them, wherever you live in Canada, we call them uh, airstrips. Some places call them runways. Now, uh, and we don't have any airfields in War Thunder. Field 2 has a lot of airfields. We don't have uh, airstrips or runways. So... You have uh, people running defense and say like a fighter attacking them or defending. Like one of the things that started out a few years ago in Gaijin and it actually was in World of Warplanes too. It's, it pissed me off then and it pisses me off today. People giving stupid asinine 
advice. Like, think about it. If somebody wants to rob your house, and the person who wants to rob your house tells you he doesn't want you to have a gun or, or anything like that to defend yourself, are you going to go get rid of your gun? Huh? Are you? No, you're going to keep your gun. But it, way back 10 years ago in World of War planes, and then it drifted over to War of Thunder, where people telling, oh, don't take out bombers. Oh, bombers are horrible. Oh, they're disgusting. Yeah, you don't want bombers. Or don't take out attackers, you know. <laughs> So they were kicking everybody's ass because nobody on the other team was taking out bombers because oh, I might get called a name for Carrot taking out a bomber. Wake up. They're losers. They're telling you not to do that so you won't win. And they'll win. Wake up. So anyway, I'm glad to see People are taking out bombers. But again, the American team takes it to the ultimate. You got 16 players in bombers, frontline bombers, heavy bombers, blah, blah, blah. And they wonder why they lose. Because you got to spread it out. Everybody has a role to play. If you see something happening and you're just flying around at 20,000 meters off in the stratosphere and there's an A point comes up and you do not go for that A point you just rather fly around like it's a Sunday flight out and you're just having a good old time be a team player head for the A if you see a bomber kill the bomber if you see somebody attacking your ground troops go after them don't just stand there, well, not stand there, fly there, and do nothing. That's not being a team player. You have to play as a team in sim. Bottom line, because no one can afford to play sim with the current gaijin economy. It's as plain and simple as that. And I did a video on it. I was mad. I was frustrated. I was venting and just tore in to you people who don't want to play Sim to win. Who don't take it seriously. Everybody, all of us who are veterans in Sim, take it seriously. We go there to win. We're not there to see if we can get a triple ace or a double ace or even an ace. Like, I've been playing, I've switched over to Sim three years ago now. I, it shows I only have 77 kills. It's, sh and yet another stat shows that I have over 200 kills. So my stats say, frags per game, 0 0.3. whoop de doo so what? I have, excuse me, this instead. Victory, 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 victory. 120% extra lines, 120% extra research points. Because the guys I play with play to win. Some of them used to be all about kill to death ratio until they started wondering, hey, this is costing me lines golden eagles to replace them and money out of my credit card to buy the golden eagles i'm making gaijin wealthy so what i got a kill to death ratio of three to one whoop de doo i'm going bankrupt good for you so a lot of a lot of my friends who used to be like that are now playing to win they're going for the a's they're going after bombers they're attacking uh, ground battle sites. They're um, doing whatever it takes to win the game. And that's what you have to do. You have to do whatever it takes to win that game. I don't mind losing if it's like 
the ticket counter is almost equal. Like we got a hair left and they won. Fine. That shows everybody did their best. But when you play on a team where your ticket counter is way over at the start and the enemies just won, that showed nobody played to win. Everybody was just there wasting everybody's time, everybody's money, and didn't give a shit. Don't be that person. You come to Sim, you play to win or stay home, stay in arcade, stay in realistic, but don't play Sim. Because a lot of us in Sim are getting very, very angry with you people who come there just to fly around with your finger up your ass. And there'll be somebody in chat who will tell you to just bugger off, go play old maid, just go away, get out, don't come back. But that's not bad. Because in places like Ill 2, they'll kick you out of the game. The server will. Or DCS. You won't be you'll be kicked off the team. Period. See ya. We don't need ya. So you still got it pretty easy on in Sim and War Thunder because all you're gonna get is somebody like me telling you to piss off. Get off the team, go somewhere else, go away, you're not helping. <coughs> so if you're gonna come to Sim, we'd love to have you. We need more players. But you come with the mindset, you're a team player, and you've come to win. Bottom line, that's it. We, no one can afford at the current gaijin greediness to play sim unless you're there to win. That's all there is to it. So, this wasn't really a rant. I just wanted to make a point about you coming from arcade or realistic to sim. There's, there's a thing in, if anybody's ever taken martial arts, one discipline over another. Like say you come from Kung Fu and you're going to another discipline. The discipline you're going to will tell you to empty your cup. What that means is that whatever you learned in the other discipline, forget it. Leave it at home. You come here with an empty cup to learn this discipline. <clears throat> I have three or four disciplines under my belt, and that's exactly what I did every time, is I emptied my cup. If I came from Taekwondo or to, over to Jiu Jitsu or Kung K, um, I'd empty my cup every time. It's like I didn't know anything. I don't know anything. And that's the way if you're coming to Sim. All your bad habits, everything you think you know in realistic or arcade, get rid of, leave it at home, don't bring it to Sim. Empty your cup and start over. And the first thing you need to learn is Sim is team oriented. It's ground attack centric, whether it's airfields, Battle zones, convoys, whatever. It's, I guess a better way of saying it is it is objective orientated. You have to play the objectives. If you're needed somewhere, go there. Don't fly around and not be a team player. Be a team player. So I hope whoever watches this it helps to come when you come to sim you're there to learn you're there to come as a team player and you play to win because otherwise you're not welcome have a good day